So you already know a little bit about 3D printing and know how it works by putting one layer on top of another layer on top of another layer. But it's important to keep that process in mind as you are creating your design. So let's look at an example. So I've designed this simple table to give my niece to use in her dollhouse. But notice what happens when I go to slice it. So you can see the table here on my printer plate. And you can see as I drag the layers down here, as I start, it will print those legs just fine. But then when it gets to the table top, what's actually going to happen on the printer when it goes to print that surface? It's going to fall down to the plate. It's going to make a whole bunch of plastic noodles all over my printer plate, make a big mess, waste a bunch of filament. It's not going to work well. So, what can I do if I want to actually print this table for my niece? I need to flip this table over. So, even though I'm actually going to use the table with the four legs on the ground, that doesn't mean I have to print it that way. In this case, it's going to make the most sense to print the table on the top surface. So, if I'm in my prepare option here on this bar, I'm going to have the option to place on face. So I just need to make sure I have that object selected. And then I want to choose the option here that looks like a square going onto a printer plate. You can also just click F on the keyboard. And now I want to click what face it is that I want to be down touching the plate. In this case, it is the top of the table. And that'll just flip it over for me. And now my plate is going to print much better. So let's look at that again. Okay, so now if I slice it, okay, you can see it's going to print the top of the table first before it prints the legs. I'll have the table as soon as it's done printing. I can take it off the plate, flip it over, and use it the way that I want. So here's a phone stand that I found in Thingiverse and that I want to be able to print out. So let's look what happens when I put it in my slicing program. So when I open this up in my slicer, you can see what it looks like. If I click here on slice plate, Notice I get this orange message, a warning that uh, it has floating elements to it. So let's look at where that might be. So notice if I drag this to the bottom and then I drag up, you can see that when it gets to this section right here, there is nothing underneath it to hold that up. So when it actually tries to print it, this is just going to fall down to the bottom and make a mess. So what can I do to fix this problem? I can lay it on its side. So if I go back to prepare, select my object, and then I have this option here to lay on face, and then I can click on the side, it doesn't matter which side, of the phone stand. It'll flip it over so that it'll print with the side down. Now when I slice it, I don't get any orange messages here. And you can see that it would print just fine. It would be able to uh, print that on its side. When it's done printing, I would be able to take that off and flip it the way that I want to use it. Now notice it does have these gaps here, but because of their size, the printer is able to cover that gap without that falling down. It has enough underneath the edge there to support those holes and still be able to print just fine. Now let's say I want to print the bolt here from this G-clamp. So when I import it into my slicer, it is lying down, and you can see there's a gap underneath here. So if I went to print this, this would fall down, make it a bunch of plastic spaghetti, and I need to fix that. So what can I do? I can reorient to this so that it is on the head right here. So I'll choose my object and click on place on or lay on face, and then click on that top and make it stand up like that. Okay, so now when I slice it, it will print just fine. Move this stuff out of the way. And you can see it would print just fine. Now there are instances in which I might want to make this lie down, but for now, for this purpose, I think it would be just fine standing up. Now let's take a look at Rascal here. So Rascal is a cute little dog, but look what happens when I put him in my slicing program. So I've got Rascal here. If I click here on Slice Plate, I'm going to get an error about some floating regions there. 
And now if I look at Rascal, and I try to find a good flat surface that I could put on the plate, I'll notice really quickly Rascal is round all over. There is no flat surface that I can put on the plate. So let's see what happens when I try to print Rascal just like this. So it's going to start out by printing those feet and then the legs. Now it would have been better to use a brim here, but I tried it without and it just happened to work. So, but notice what happens when it gets to the body here. There's nothing underneath it to support it, so it just starts making spaghetti. How then do I go about fixing this problem? How am I going to be able to print Rascal? Well, I have the option to add supports. So support structures can be used in buildings. So these are temporary structures used to hold something up until the structure is strong enough to stand on its own. And once the ceiling or roof is strong enough to stand on its own, I can then remove those structures. Well, support structures in 3D printing work very much the same way. I'll add these structures underneath my project while it's printing, and then once it's complete, I'll be able to remove them and I'll have a complete project that is able to print without making a bunch of filament spaghetti. So now when I print Rascal with support, it's able to print his legs, and then his body, and then his head, his ears, there's no problems at all. And after he's done printing, I can just pick him up and pull that support material away. Now, in this particular instance, the way Rascal's shaped, it makes it very easy to pull support material off. I can just do it with my hands, and it will just fall right off. Now, there are other times, though, when you'll need to get out a pair of needle nose pliers to try to pick at that support material in order to be able to pull it off. So sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard, uh, sometimes you need to be really careful because you have small intricate details, but like I said with Rascal it was pretty easy. So now you know what support structures are, how do you know exactly when you need them and when you don't? Well I like to use what's called the YHT test. So YH and T are three letters that will help you determine whether or not you need support material. Now watch what happens as the printer begins printing these three letters. So it's going to print the base just fine and it's going to start the letters just fine. Now watch what happens on the letter H as it gets to the middle part of that letter. It's able to just bridge across it. So it's able to do that without any problems. That's what we call a bridge and a 3D printer is able to bridge small gaps. Now the wider the gap is, the lower the quality of the print will be, and it will begin to overhang sag and eventually collapse if it gets too wide. But it can do small gaps without the need for support material. Now watch as the printer continues making the letter Y. So you'll notice it's also able to make the arms on the letter Y just fine. The arms don't have a steep enough overhang. There's enough filament underneath them to support them. So the printer is able to print them just fine. So a general rule of thumb, as long as whatever you're printing doesn't overhang any more than the arms of the Y, which is about a 45 degree angle, it should be able to print just fine without support. Now watch what happens as the printer gets to the T. You'll see that it starts to make it sag down. So it sort of prints it, but it doesn't look very good. That's because the T has a very steep overhang. It's at a 90 degree angle and the printer's not able to print that because there's nothing underneath it to support it. So if you try to print anything like the letter T, it's not going to print well. You're going to see a lot of sagging underneath it. And if you get too far out, it's even going to make spaghetti. So to summarize, you can print gentle sloping things like the Y without support. You can print bridges like on the H without support. But when you get to steep overhangs, like you see there on the T, you're going to need supports if you want it to look good. So now you know when to add supports, but how do you go about adding those? So in your slicing program, I'm using Bamboo Studio, but regardless of what slicing program you have, it's going to have a similar process for enabling support, making sure that you have support on your project. So insert your project, just like I did here with my Rascal, and then you want to find an option for support. On Bamboo Studio, it's over here where I have these tabs. I'm going to click on the one that says support. I'm going to click the checkbox that says enable support. And then notice I'm going to have two different types. First, let's look at normal. 
So normal support in some slicing programs is called grid support. And the reason that's called that is because when I slice it, it looks like a grid. Okay, and so it just goes back and forth and it adds support to my project. Now let's see what happens when I switch to tree support. So I'll come back over here, change from normal auto to tree auto. Now some slicing programs will call this organic support. So if you're using a different slicer, be sure and check for organic if you don't see the option for tree. Now when I slice the plate, I'm going to see why it's called tree support. It looks like a tree. It has branches and a trunk. And uh, this is just a different type of support. On a project like Rascal, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference whether I use normal support or tree support. They'll both be fairly easy to remove and they both use about the same amount of filament. But on some projects, it can make a big difference. So let's look at a few more examples. So this is the top to a box. It has a raised surface on it with the sun on there, so I can't flip it over, unfortunately. So I am going to go ahead and have to print it this direction, but I will need some port to hold up the middle of the box while it's printing. Now, I have the option here selected for tree, so I'm gonna hit enable support, make sure I have tree selected, and let's look what that looks like. So when I look at what the tree support actually looks like, you can see I have hundreds of tiny little trees with all those branches that are gonna to be touching that bottom layer. So that's the layer that's going to be touching underneath. It's going to be really, really tough to remove and get a clean looking underside. Now it is the underside of the box, it doesn't matter too much. It's also going to take a lot longer to print. So let's look how long that took. So it took 37 grams of filament and it's going to take two hours and 21 minutes to print. So let's look what happens when I switch to normal support. So if I go over here, change to normal and slice that again, I'm going to see now it's only gonna take an hour and seven minutes to print. It's gonna use a little bit less filament and you're gonna see that it would actually be a lot easier to remove. So I have that grid up there, um, but it's gonna be a lot easier to get a little maybe tiny uh, flathead screwdriver under there and get all of that filament material, support material off in one scrape as opposed to the trees that I'm gonna be picking at for a long time. So when you have a large flat overhang, it's best to use the normal support. So let's look at the model of the Statue of Liberty here. So you can see there's some areas that are gonna need support. So underneath her arm here will need support and then up here around her torch is gonna need some support. So first let's try and see what that looks like within, with the normal support. So let me slice it, move that out of the way for a moment. And you can see all those green areas where it places support. So it's supporting her arm, it also supports some areas of her robe. It's supporting the crown up here as well as the torch. Now you can see it's gonna be very difficult to remove some of that support without breaking some of those little pieces because they're pretty delicate. So you can also look here and see how much filament it's gonna take, 25.8 grams, and it's gonna take two hours and 16 minutes to print that way. Now let's see what it looks like when I put tree supports on there. Now you can see the tree supports only support the arm on this side as well as the torch on that side, it's gonna be a whole lot easier to remove that because it's really only touching in two places. Now let's check how much filament and time that took. Okay, so 22 grams, a little bit less, two hours and three minutes. So the big advantage here though, will be removing that material, it's gonna be a whole lot easier. So when do you use tree supports? Use tree supports anytime you have an organic structure or when you only have like an arm sticking out and just need to support one piece. Uh, it's also really helpful when you have some delicate pieces that's easier to remove that tree support without having, you can use filament clippers to kind of clip it away rather than to having to rip at it with the uh, needle nose pliers uh, or your fingers. So again, use the normal supports when you're looking at something that's basically flat. Use tree supports when you're looking at something that's got more organic structure to it. 
Now I do want to show you one other option here. Notice we were looking at the auto support feature. There is an option here to do manual supports as well. This is a more advanced feature, but sometimes you're going to find it doesn't do the supports the way you want them to. So you can actually go in and do manual supports and then use the painting support feature and actually just paint on the places where you want to have support. And then when you go to slice the plate, then it'll only put supports on those spaces where you want, where you actually painted it on there. So remember before when I did normal supports, it put support around the crown and around the robe. Now it doesn't do that. So just a more advanced feature to keep in mind in case you ever need that. So as a final example here, you're going to see that sometimes orienting objects and using supports have to work together. So this is an airplane model that I found. And if I use supports on this, you're going to see that it's not going to look pretty. It's going to take a lot of support and they're going to be hard to remove. So this is what it looks like with tree supports. And this is what it's going to look like with normal supports. So neither way is really good. There's a lot of green there. But notice if I reorient my object, so if I rotate it just a little bit, and remember, it's about a 45 degree angle that it's able to print without needing uh, additional support material. So I'm going to rotate it like that. And then I enable support. And let's do tree support in this case. You're going to see it needs a lot less support material. And it's able to print just like that, which is going to be a lot nicer to clean up in the end than it would be either of the other ways. So now you know when you need support structures and how to go about adding them in the slicing program. But still keep in mind, it's best to not use support structures if you don't have to. When you add supports, it's going to require additional filament, which is additional costs. It's also going to take more time to print. And it's also going to leave the edge of your print rough where you remove that support material. So you're either gonna have to sand it or you're going to have to try to put it in some location where it's hidden. Um, it, you can even break your part when you're trying to remove the support material and break the object itself. So if you can avoid using them, try to avoid them. But for some prints, it's just absolutely necessary. So it's good to know how to add them when you need them.